So here is our estimating module. I can click on any of these names and browse and click on the, the, the actual estimates for that company. It's really easy to browse around and find stuff. You can search any partial strings. Uh, I can have saved searches as well already here, estimates that I've made in the last 10 days, for example. Anyway, if we're making a new estimate, we can make them from scratch by clicking here. Uh, you can just put in your part numbers, names, choose your clients from the drop-down list, and sort of build something from scratch. What we actually recommend, though, is uh, to actually copy something that's existing, if you have something existing, or even better, to use our template system. This allows you to organize different types of estimates into different categories. And then if you have something that's similar, like this one is two horizontal ops with one outside process made out of aluminum. So if I have something that's similar I'm quoting, I'm just going to copy that, uh, choose, uh, put in my client's part number, put a name in, uh, choose my quantities, or I can leave the existing template quantities. Uh, I can have multiples separated by commas, and I can submit that and make a new estimate from this one. Anyway, so that's that. Uh, let's take a look at what an estimate looks like. And we'll actually just go take a look at this one here. So this is actually an assembly estimate, and I wanted to show you a couple things about assemblies. At the top of the page here, we have the basic part numbers and names, the rev levels, the client, the contact people at that client. I have the, the routing table. So you can see this is very simple, some planning, installing helicoils, part marking, and inspection. Uh, I have different time elements, so setup time, non-recurring setup time, inspection time, actual run time. Over on the far right, I even have, what we, this is a fairly new feature, what we call resource rates. So these are rates that are being pulled in for the individual work centers. Uh, these, the, the gray ones are defaulted, but I can override those if I want to. And in this case, I'm quoting 10, 50, 100, and 250 per quantity. And you'll see here in my bomb master, I have uh, the, all these numbers. And if I click on those, it's going to take me to the same place as I would see if I clicked right here. So this is my bill of materials. This bill of materials is actually associated with Operation 1100 for installing these helicals. So if I click here, you'll see Operation 1100. Um, and this is basically, uh, that's some part numbers, revision, description, quantity per, suppliers, uh, the order numbers. So this is actually our internal order number for this fastener, for this mil spec helicoil. Uh, and this is, so this is actually feeding from our COTS module. COTS stands for commercial off the shelf, and this is uh, an item there. So if I open this up in another tab, you can see here's that item, here's my inventory, here's my suppliers, here's uh, my actually little inventory table showing how many I have, how many I currently need. You can see that's negative availability right now because I need a lot more than I actually have in stock. So we're feeding all that. Uh, if I uh, let's not, <laughs> we won't get too far into that. Um, next to that is my cost table. You'll notice all of these are sort of gray italics and they have different price breaks here. So this one is actually feeding, I guess I will open this up again. So this pricing here is feeding in from, excuse me, from this pricing table from our, our primary supplier. So it is pulling in these price breaks. So based on what it actually applies to the quantities we're quoting, it'll choose the right pricing. And then uh, this one here, this is an actual machined part, so it's an estimate uh, rather than the COTS module. So, it's, so we have an estimate here, and this is actually pulling in my estimated unit prices based on the quantities I'm quoting. And if I click this little tab right here, uh, this link assembly bomb master, this will actually show us based on the, the four different quantities that I'm quoting, which price applies to both the fasteners and the machined detail, including those non-reoccurring charges. So we'll, we'll take a look at that in just a second. I can choose how much I'm marking these things up. Uh, that's really simple to do. If I click right back here, I can see my default markup is 10%, and that's going to apply on anything on my bomb that I have a markup multiplier on. So this markup multiplier with a 1.0, that means I'm, I'm going to mark up these fasteners by 10%. Uh, I'm not, this is, you notice this estimate here is zero. I'm not marking this up at all because these, I've actually already put my profit into this actual estimate. I don't want to mark it up twice. So here's the sub-estimate for the machine detail, right? There's my raw material. Here's my outside processes. Let's take a look here. So as an example, we have 
this is two different assay processes. We're doing anodizing and chem film, uh, lead times, unit prices, lot charges. So you can see this is 120 plus 150, that's 270, right? I can link in my vendor's quotes. Uh, but this 270 is summarizing right down here. At my 10 piece quantity, it's just using the lot charge. Uh, at my 25 and 100 piece, it's actually using the calculated values based on unit prices. So it'll automatically pull that in. I don't have any bomb items on the sub detail. If I did, I'd see numbers here. I also threw in some numbers for tooling and shipping charges. Again, the markup here, scrap rate, uh, number of parts or percentage. And you can again see here's my resource rate. So I'm charging 15 bucks an hour for sort of this sort of office or bench work, 30 bucks uh, for this Haas, 50 bucks for this, uh, this machine right here, this five axis Herco, uh, 10 bucks an hour for my shipping. I just threw these numbers in here. Um, and if we come into this page, we call our cost breakdown page, this is where we can see all the, the backend calculations uh, of what we're, what we're charging for. So here's our actual prices down here. Uh, you notice we have two sets of columns. Uh, that's basically how we're handling those non-reoccurring charges. And uh, so that if, if, you bearing the unit, if you're bearing those NRE charges into the unit price, this is what our unit prices would be. If you're separating them out, then this is the unit prices, and this would be the, the NRE on the first order. So if we come back here, uh, we can see those are calculated based on anything in this non-reoccurring setup column, uh, any non-recurring inspection, and non-recurring material and hardware. Uh, if I've ever quoted this thing just by itself, I can click right up here and choose quote, uh, and I can deal with those non-recurring charges uh, separately as a separate line item or buried in the unit price. And then the, the quotes will be added right into here, where I can see what my prices are, uh, lead times, part numbers, terms and conditions, you know, all that kind of stuff is here. But back on, uh, let's close out this guy, back on this uh, upper level assembly, so it's pulling in all those estimated prices on the machined part, all the, all the prices for my, my purchased item. And that, again, is rolling up into my full bomb cost, with, which I can and then marking up just the, just the, uh, the inserts. And then when I'm ready to take a quote on this, let's just go ahead and do one of these. Here it is quoting, in this case, the four different quantities. There's all my unit prices. Um, I can just click Submit from here. Uh, let me just save this page. And there's my quote. So I can, I, of course, I can check this back out, throw in a, some delivery times or lead times. Uh, I have an internal notes field that I can mess with here if I want to. Let's say I rounded this up to 400. Um, I can edit any of these. Uh, I can put in a, a note right there. This will not be shown to the customer if I make a PDF out of this. And then in here, I can double click to grab, you know, a date picker, um, or I can just type into it as well um, and type in what I want to type into those fields. And then, of course, all my terms and conditions pulled forward from my estimate. I can also edit these things here. So that is just a little bit about Oh, I don't need to make an attachment, but that's a little bit about how ProShop works. If a client orders this, then we can launch a customer purchase order directly off of here, and it just flows super smoothly right into the process. Let's real quickly look at what uh, you do if you have a package quote, where you have a bunch of part numbers you're quoting. So the first thing I would do is come into our estimate module here, and I'm going to come up under my name and go to this thing that we call my carts. I'm going to go into my estimate carts. ProShop has a whole series of different sort of shopping carts that you use in different modules. So for estimating, let's say I had a, you know, a new quote that someone just asked me about. I could click right down here, give it a name, and then start doing estimating and adding those estimates into my cart. But what that ultimately will look like, if we look at, say, like this brackets one, if I click right on here, I can see I have three different estimates all inside my cart. Uh, and I can click on to create a quote either with the NRE built into the unit price or not. So if we go ahead and click here, then you can see here that is pulled in, uh, in this case, different quantities for all these different part numbers, the dash six, dash seven, dash eight. Uh, there's all of our prices. Uh, I, of course, can put in lead times, the kind of details. You'll also notice down here on the uh, terms and conditions, it's separated out the dash six, seven, and eight based on differences in those um, in those actual terms. The common ones will be listed right here. Anything that's unique will be listed separately. So that's kind of a cool feature. 
if I go ahead and click save to this, uh, and then I, let's say I modified some pricing, came into this one, let me check this out, uh, put in, you know, maybe this is going to be 15 minutes instead of 10. If I come right back uh, into that quote that I was just on here, uh, and let me check, click check out here, and you see the set button. So you watch what happens to these prices when I click set. I click set and it's going to pull in fresh numbers. So it'll do that all the way down the line if you've estimated a bunch of different stuff or if different people are working on different estimates, and then at the end you refresh everything, uh, you can get all that updated pricing uh, pulled right in. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of a taste of how our estimating and quoting process works in ProShop. Thanks so much.